I was playing a rugby game um, during the game. I went down with pain in my ribs because I got tackled by two bigger lads. Woke up the next day, um, I was I collapsed on my bathroom floor, and um, my left side of my body was all weak, and I couldn't basically function properly. The main eye where it happened was there, but like it moved, the blood clot it moved all the way back to my brainstem, and that's where it all kicked in, and so I suffered stroke. Yeah, it had a big impact on rugby league in Hull. It, it, it just basically like felt like I was really, really drunk. Two hours later, I woke up with my auntie by my side with like an ambulance coming, rushing through the door. They just didn't want to, I guess, panic us since I was already in a real bad state. So they just got us there as quick, quick as they could and got rushed me straight into Resus where I had two scans, first one showed nothing wrong, and the second one, um, there was a doctor who came down from surgery and looked at it and then finally realised that there was something really wrong, like there was a blood clot and I didn't have no blood flow. That's what caused the stroke. Um, there wasn't so much pain, I was just got a real, it was a real bad headache. Um, there was, I was, couldn't talk properly. Um, couldn't feel the side of my body. You basically, you woke up on your bathroom floor, then you're in hospital having scans, and they're saying that oh, you could lose him. It just bit. It was. It just all happened so so fast. I didn't know what was going on when I was in the hospital till I said, if you don't get in to, um, surgery, you will lose him. Then I was like, oh, this is something bad. Then took me into theatre. Um, didn't mind managed to remove 50% of the blood flow. That's when they put me into an induced coma and rushed me straight off to Leeds where they, they did another surgery, but I was unsuccessful to get the rest of the blood clot out. So they put me on um, blood thinners so the blood could actually go past the blood clot. So I was getting more blood to my brain, so everything was starting to go back to normal. But they wanted to know like, if I was going to come out with, if, like I couldn't, they said that it might, it might come out um, not being able to talk, eat or walk ever again. But luckily, I've managed to get all that back. I remember um, I was only for the first week, um, really, like, just not in, like, the world. I was really on a lot of medication, so th I was not really, like, here, if you get me. Um, but then I suffered another stroke, which was caused because I had a little mini bleed, but all that um, went back to normal because of the blood thinners I was on. So that got all fine. Um, then I think after that, I was just getting more like, drugs pumped into me to make sure I was fine. I think it was like the fifth week I was here. Um, that's when I started to dose out um, on all like, the drugs I had, so I was getting back to norm normality, if you get me. Second week, yeah, because that's when I started, I think it's when I started to walk a bit, because I remember walking up down this long like path, going up and down, um, see if I could get walk properly, because I've just had like intense physio to get my muscles moving again. And that I just remember being real stiff and not being, like I could walk, but it was just really like hard. Like I'm just starting to learn how to walk again, basically. I was spent my time. It was it was on like a mini arcade machine. What's in the playroom next door? Or playing? I think it's Midnight Run. It's like a car game on the PlayStation Two. Like um, when they brought it to your bed and basically eating food. That was how I spent basically the rest of the time here. Yeah. I was in Leeds for eight weeks and then I moved to Hull for the rest of the two weeks. Yeah, I had, I had a lot of support on social media and um, from the RFL Benevolent Fund, which like, took the media away from Sarah so she could basically focus on me. Social media was a big, big help for my recovery. When I was in hospital without social media, um, I probably wouldn't have 
got here because I, I knew that there was a lot of support behind me. So that's how I basically started walking again because people was encouraging. And I just basically was like, OK, I'm not going to let it beat me. So I just basically stood up out of bed and started walking. Um, I suffer uh, neuro fatigue. Um, I suffer from anxiety, um, panic attacks, um, TIAs, which is mini strokes, um, ma major headaches, which basically, like, if a normal person had a migraine, they're my headaches. And migraines for me are basically like, basically getting my head stamped on numerous times. That's what my migraines feel like. My charity is called Team Colonel Lines, raising awareness for brain injury in sport, but it's not just for sport, it's for every brain injury because brain, the brain is so vital to our everyday lives. Um, and I've raised over £50,000 um, for individual charities to just help them get up and um, make, make kids who have got disabilities lives a bit easier than it was before. I like raise the money by like t-shirts, ruby shirts, balls, bands, um, scrum hats. It, there's loads of things I do. They've given me like the strength to go and basically now like conquer the world where because of the brain injury. So I'm just getting used to everything now. And I think without life for a kid, um, there because that was giving me support and, and um, telling me where to go because I've got because I've got kids there with brain injuries and disabilities so they know basically where to go so basically without I think without them I probably would not be as confident and like as how I am right now there's a, there's a major thank you to um, the doctor who saved my life who I've met now um, basically without him, I, I would have died. So there's, um, I could not thank him enough. But they are like, they're the main ones, like Life for a Kid, Benevolent Fund, um, Flex Health. There was physios for the first year of my injury. Without like them, I would probably wouldn't be walking, running as fast as I probably could. Um, Steve Ball, he works for the Benevolent Fund. He's a real, is an amazing person. Um, thank you to Sarah. Um, Sarah's mentee. Uh, this thank you to L52 too, because they made my life um, on this ward very a memorable one. I don't so much miss rub like full on rugby no more because I've started to get used to the fact that I can't play again. Um, but like I'm now I'm playing the PDRL. Personal Disability Rugby League, so that's given me a bit, a bit of the Rugby League back. Before my brain injury, I had a plan for life, what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, and it just seemed to got taken away from me all real fast, so I'm just taking each day as it comes. I want, I want to become a paramedic, um, which I am set on really, I really want to do that. But they've said that I'm going to have the blood clot for the rest of my life. I'm going to be on um, blood thinners too for the rest of my life. Um, but if that's going to keep me alive, then I have no problem doing that. It does feel weird that it feels like there's like a ticking time bomb basically in the back of my head. It's strange knowing that there's something really dangerous in your head which could cause serious problems at, at any time. But like I said, I'm just going to live life to the fullest and, and if that day does come when the bomb explodes and I hope I've lived life to the best I possibly could have.